Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Menachem Creditor. It's my honor to serve as scholar in residence and rabbi for UJA Federation of New York. We bring you Torah and music blessing and community every weekday. We've been doing so since March 18th, 2020. Today it is Thursday, October 26, 2023. It's broadcast 913, and that only is the beginning of it. We have so much to do, friends, so much to share. We found each other from around the world when COVID began so that we could connect and talk to each other and find each other and say good morning and kind things to each other. And here we are, our 913th time, thank you, Benny, gathering together, convening, and getting ready to do our work in the world to make it safer and better for everyone. But we have to begin by saying good morning. So good morning. It's good to see all of you here. Ellen and Ellen and Jacqueline and Khanna and Penny, Douglas and Michelle and Ariel. Hi, beautiful girl. That's my daughter. Hi, everyone. Julianne and Natasha, Arlene and Natalie. Good to see all of you. Hi, Judy. Deborah, good to see you. Let's get started, friends. Let's take a breath. And when I say take a breath, I mean let's take a breath. We're going to breathe. We're going to remember, as Linda taught us, that we are kind souls. And we're going to learn some Torah this morning. So let's take a breath again. Maybe I'm just talking to myself. Here's a bracha for learning. Sing with me. so good to be with you. There's so much going on in our world. I want to say how complicated it is to try to hold anything else that's happening in the world while our hearts are so focused on Israel. And that's just how it is. Our hearts are focused on Israel, and that's how it should be. Our family is one. Yes, there are segments of the Jewish world that are speaking very differently than me. And I'm not going to spend my time judging them because we're family. When we disagree, we're family. I know that at core, even where we disagree, all we want is for people to be safe. That's all we want. I reached out to an artist friend of mine. I'm supposed to have coffee with her tomorrow. And I said to her, I'm so sorry. There's too much going on. I won't be able to do it. My heart is in Israel. And she wrote back, I was in Israel on October 7th visiting my mom and my sisters. I now have and will forever have PTSD. So I'm not talking about the politics of anything, but of course that's wrapped up in this. I'm just talking about what it is to be there for our family and to be kind and understanding because we don't know what the other person might be carrying. So to everyone who's here, there and here, I'm just offering you love. That's what tonight, today's gonna be about. That's what this morning's Torah is going to be about. It's also going to be about defiance. It's going to be about this Parsha. And I'm not leaving behind a terrible gun massacre that happened in Maine in the United States yesterday. 
It's not where the bulk of my attention is. But if I mean to be who I mean to be, if Judaism matters to me in the way that I claim, I have to have a big enough heart to hold all of this. We have to have big enough hearts to hold our people and to hold people. I have to cultivate the compassion that when the death count in Gaza goes up to, my heart breaks over and over. The moral reprehensibility here is on Hamas. But that doesn't mean my heart should stop working. So I encourage you, friends, keep your heart working. I encourage me in front of you, keep your heart working. Our hearts are big enough for this. A little bit of Torah. But first, a word for my beautiful son. We celebrated his bar mitzvah this past Shabbat. And just yesterday in school, he wrote a short essay about a book. He shared it with his teacher, who promptly burst into tears and sent it to the entire faculty of the school. So I'm just going to tell you what he wrote. He's talking about a character in a book who says he escorts us through the same crooked little streets It is completely dark outside, the darkness of Egypt. Everyone around us is silent, no sign of life. This is what a beautiful boy, I call my own, wrote. This quote was really meaningful to me because when I read it, I actually felt a chill in my body. I can't imagine how scared he must have been to run away in the middle of the night in the cold, not knowing what would happen next and not knowing where he would end up. He didn't even know if he would survive. If Charles Goldberg, the character, was alive today, I would give him a hug. I would tell him he was so brave and inspiring, and then tell him that I can't believe the pain the Jews and so many other human beings are still going through. Each Shabbat, Jews remember how God took the Jewish people out of slavery, but I don't know that we aren't still slaves. I've been thinking so much about the people that Hamas took as hostages and praying they are alive and strong. I can imagine they may have that same fear and the dark, cold feeling that Charles had. I can't believe that it's still happening. So if I were to ask him a question today, it would be, how can we finally escape? How can we change the world? 13-year-old voice. So I'm going to ask you again, are you breathing? Are you taking a breath? This is what our children are seeing and thinking and feeling about. We are too. So I want to share, friends, a little piece of Torah from this week's Parsha. It doesn't answer the things that are scary. It doesn't instantly change anything, but it tells you who we are and who we've always been called to be. So there is a very interesting phrase in this Parsha that happens for the first time. Remember that in this week, this week's Parsha, Stom is ransacked, the city, and uh, Avram's nephew Lot is kidnapped, taken hostage, this week in the Torah. Someone tells Avram, but I want you to hear how they tell Avram what has happened to his nephew. Vayaged Avram ha'ivri. And it was told to Avram the ivri. Now, ivri is where the word Hebrew comes from. But I want you to read a, hear a comment. The sages teach that Avram was called ivri on one side. Over means to cross. Because the entire world was me'ever achad on one side of a moral and spiritual divide, while he was on Me'ever Hashemi, on the opposite side. The defining character of Abraham and his children is their ability to pursue truth even if others are marching to the beat of a different drummer. We are Ivrim. Yes, we are Yehudim, Jewish, from the word Judah. But we come from Avram and Sarai. Avram HaIvri. Yes, the world speaks very differently from the way we speak right now. Yes, we have to face this with open eyes and courageous hearts. Yes, 
These questions are very alive. I'm going to ask my son's question again. Each Shabbat, Jews remember how God took the Jewish people out of slavery, but I don't know that we aren't still slaves. A very powerful piece that was just written by a Rebbe of mine, Rabbi Bradley Shavit Artson, called A Letter to My Non-Jewish Friends, trying to explain what it is to pray in a space that needs to be protected by armed guards, what it is to send our children to school where they are guarded, he said, I daven, I pray in a cage. He said, and yes, my Muslim friends pray in a cage too. We have to be able to express this truth even if the world remains unwilling to hear it, we will call it out. And with strength, with passion, with an incredible community, like the one that is convened by UJ Federation of New York, where I am so humbled to serve, where we have raised $110 million plus and distributed already on the ground in Israel $32 million plus, faster than countries have acted, tells us that we are Ivrim today. We are true inheritors of Avram's legacy, you and me. We are called to do nothing less than to speak our truth, whether it is to protect Americans from the ravages of an ongoing gun violence epidemic that took 22 lives yesterday in Maine, or whether it is to fight for our families' souls, to save our children and our grandparents, our survivors who were taken hostage. We are called to do it all with hearts big enough to hold the whole world. We are created in the image of God, just like every person. And with that, as Heschel says, a fraction of God's infinite power is, our, is at our disposal. We will absolutely call out the injustice and the horrors of Jewish students being trapped in the library at Cooper Union. Yesterday, 2023, New York, America. We will absolutely call out the blasphemy being spoken on college campuses, defending and championing Hamas. We will call it out because we are Ivrim. We are Ivrim. If the world is Me'ever Sheni on the other side, we are Me'ever this way. That's what it is to be descendants of Avram and Sarai. That is what it is to be alive as a Jew today to do what must be done in the face of all odds. You know, there's a, a, an early Chalutzim song, an early pioneer song in Israel. And despite it all, in the face of everything, Israel, 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 and that was written before the state was founded. The unlikelihood of self-determination again for the Jewish world in the face of what we are facing now. It didn't only begin with Herzl, but remember that Zionism itself, modern political Zionism began when Theodore Herzl was covering the Dreyfus trial in France and people were not saying treasonous Frenchmen, which by the way, was of course an anti-Semitic false accusation. They didn't say treasonous Frenchmen, they said death to the Jews. And so that triggered in Herzl the work that began with him, not only with him, with many others like Leon Pinsker and Achad Am, but effectively with Herzl, and resulted in our homeland, a place that we call home, that we face when we pray. <clears throat> We've always faced when we prayed, and now we have to do what we must to protect our family. So we're not going to be done with this, not for a long time. We are never going to be done with this. Our work as UJA, your work in whatever community you are in, is to strengthen yourselves, build the courage, and show up. Show up. Get loud. Be proud. Rally. Call your elected officials. Tell them that it has been now 19 plus days and our grandparents and children are still held hostage. We have work to do. It has been one day 
since Jewish students in New York City were barricaded in the library by scary protesters who were championing Hamas. We are Ivrim, and we will do what we must just like our ancestor Avram did. We will call out with hearts big enough to hold the whole world that all of God's children, including us, deserve dignity and safety. We will do what we must. So don't you dare give up hope, friends. Sadness might not be a choice, but hope is absolutely a mitzvah and hopelessness is a sin. I'm gonna say that again. It's the most forceful thing I say, friends. I'm not the kind of rabbi who tells anyone what to do, but recently this has been something that I've really been telling people to do. So give me, give me your ears. I'm telling you what to do right now. Do not be silent. Do not give up hope. Be loud. Be proud to be a Jew. Tell the world what it is to be an Ivri, to stand for truth and dignity, and to make sure that even in the face of unspeakable trauma, our hearts are big enough to hold everyone. 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 And we don't leave our own hearts out of that equation. So. Take a breath. Let's sing Hatikva. Od lo avda tikva tenu. We have not yet given up hope. It's not what we do. We're not allowed. Our ancestors didn't. Neither will our descendants. Kolon baleva pnima nefesh Yehudi homia. Ulfate Mizrach Kadima Ain Letzion Sophia Od Loanda Tikvatenu A Tikva Bat Shnot Alpain Liot Amhoshi Be'artzenu Eretz Zion Virushalayim Liot Amhoshi Be'artzenu Eretz Zion Virushalayim Bless you, friends. See you tomorrow.